What is visual style and why does it matter so much when you're doing AI image generation inside of Canva? Well, we're going to talk about that inside of this video. As a reminder, this video is part of a tutorial series on the latest AI tools in Canva. So if you want to check out some of those other videos and learn all about the different AI tools in Canva, just check the description below this video and you'll find links to all the different videos that are part of this series. As a second reminder, I do have a couple of free giveaways that are complements to this learning series. So I have my Canva AI tool guide, which is just a quick visual reference to really go over the each tool, where to find it, how to use it, tips for using the tool. So just an easy reference you can have handy whenever you're working with these tools. And then the second free giveaway is my visual style guide, which is really going to help you start to learn the language you can use when prompting and creating AI images to really get a variety of great results. So it's going to give you over 100 keywords, descriptions to go along with those, and it's going to really help you start to build that sort of visual language and that library of terms you need to get great results. So I'm going to put a link in the first pinned comment below and also in the description below this video, sign up for my email and you can get those free guides. Okay. In the last video, we talked about some tips for using these AI image generation tools in Canva. And I mentioned how it sometimes makes sense to start from that practical approach of what you're going to need for your business. What's going to be the end use. But we also talked about getting creative in visual style. And I want to use this video to drive home this idea of visual style and show you how easy it is to get drastically different results, even though essentially you're asking for the same subject matter. So I'm going to do this just through an example here. I've typed in this very simple prompt of a woman and her cat. And so if you type in something simple like a woman and a cat, we're going to get some different results here and they vary slightly. Uh, so, but they're all basically the same here. Uh, now there are some differences here in terms of culture and eth ethnicity. So those are all things you can build into your prompt if that's an important part of it. But then also it's going to be important to describe the visual style and to start to develop your language of visual styles just so you can very easily get much more of a variety of results when you use this image generation here in Canva. So let me just scroll down just to show you what I mean. So a very simple prompt of our woman, a woman and her cat, but you can get drastically different results just by adding a few words, sometimes only one word, but one or a few words to describe a visual style. And that's what I've done here. So I just want to walk you through some of these examples that I created just by using this woman and her cat prompt and then adding a style at the end. And I think this is going to illustrate one while using that style that's part of the built-in interface of the tool. That's not important because you can just describe your style and get way more styles than the pre-made styles they offer you sort of in that tool dialogue. For all of these, I just left that style, you know, drop down to smart, and then I added the style keyword. So in this instance here, I added pop art. And so then suddenly we get an image like this, way different than what you're gonna get if you leave off that pop art and you just ask for a woman or cat because you're going to probably get something more photorealistic. But then suddenly, if you want something more in this style, now, of course, sometimes you're going to get those wonky results here where the cat's body seems separated from the head. So sometimes you are going to have this weird stuff going on. But in terms of getting the style you want, just adding that descriptor, that keyword, that visual style makes a huge difference. So a woman and her cat is pop art. Here we said surrealist. So different art styles, different moods, different lighting conditions. You can include all sorts of different things here as that prompt or visual style. So here I asked for something abstract. And so look at how cool this is. Look at how different this is uh, from just asking for a woman and her cat. So again, it's going to depend on your end use, but if you want to get creative, start to see some of these sorts of different styles you can get. You really have to practice and build up your library of language for these terms. And then the more you do this, the more you're just going to realize that you can really do endless things here. They're really endless possibilities. Uh, uh, let's go over a couple more that I did here. So here, high key portrait. So high key portrait is usually when you have a, you know, a lot of stronger lights. And so you're going to have uh, a lot of bright lighting as opposed to sort of a low key where you have a lot of shadows and dark lighting. Uh, so high key portrait, you can use something like a lighting style. So it can be an art genre, but it can also be something like a lighting style, a mood. So high key portrait here. I went with more of a mood. I typed in ominous and then suddenly look at these. Look at how this really you get that ominous feel. So again, descriptive keywords. It can just be as simple as using an adjective, an art style, a mood, a texture. So many different things you can do here if you just start to practice, 
you know, thinking of visual style. So for here, just using the word minimalist, and then suddenly that's what we have in these results, something that's really minimal, okay? Here, high fantasy art. So high fantasy art style. Again, totally different than if we just don't use any descriptor at all. Uh, just go through some other cubists. So again, sort of a art style here, cubist, uh, gothic. Here's one steampunk. So steampunk art style. Again, totally different results just by adding in one or two words here. Again, art nouveau. So lots of art styles, lots of, you know, painting styles, art deco. You can get drastically different results. Avant-garde. So here's an avant-garde one. Up here we have op art. Okay, so here we said whimsical folk art. So look at how this has a totally different style and feel because we use whimsical folk art. So there might be, you know, a campaign you're working on where this type of style really works, really makes sense. So again, you're still going to want to use, uh, think of those end uses, but just in terms of being creative, uh, trying out different styles and having way more options, visual styles, visual keywords, that's going to be the key to getting lots of varying results uh, with this sort of tool. Here's one for street art. Another one here, anime. So cartoon. So again, you're seeing endless, endless things. So here's one where I asked for 3D figures. And so suddenly we're getting something that has that depth, that 3D feel to it. Again, it's just about building up this language, building up these styles. So you might want to start to keep a library of, a, of these keywords, examples you've created, just so you can start to figure out what works for you. So here, Western, it's just sort of speaking towards a movie genre, Western. So something like that, pulp art, superhero. So again, totally different, superhero. You know, just by adding a few words here, suddenly we get something that could be playful and maybe you'd be doing a playful campaign or something like this makes sense. But you have to understand these keywords and know how to get these different styles. Comic book style, uh, futuristic, stained glass. So again, thinking of textures, thinking of art styles. You can get some really creative results if you just start to think in this, uh, this manner. So geometric, uh, organic, uh, kinetic, and occasionally you're gonna get ones where you know result returns that it doesn't like, and you're gonna get that. That's not a big deal. You can generate things again. Uh, whimsical style, high, high fashion, Quilling. So, so here's another example, this quilling here. So with the quilling, I was thinking of a particular art style and it didn't quite understand what I meant. So sometimes just using one word like this isn't enough, but then if I actually describe it in detail, so this is just another example where, have to, where you have to learn when the tool is going to understand what you need, when you need to provide a little bit more detail. So with this one, I just asked for quilling. And of course it's showing some different things, sort of ink quill here with the pen. I really meant this art style here, and so this time I specifically described it. Delicate designs made by rolling, shaping, gluing strips of paper to create dimensional decorative art. And so to now suddenly look at the result we can get back by being very specific with our description. So sometimes you can just use a word, but then other times if you really get creative and you describe something, then you can get these really detailed, intricate, unique results that you wouldn't get otherwise if you weren't descriptive like this. So again, sometimes a couple words, but other times if it's not giving you what you want, you might have to really specifically describe what you want. Here's one we're just saying flat put, cut paper style was enough. That's all I needed to do. And then suddenly we're getting images and that art style. So again, really cool, really different, gives a really different feel from just sort of a photorealistic image. So again, thinking about your end use and what's gonna make sense, okay? So hopefully this all makes sense. Hopefully this really drives home how important it is going to be to develop these visual keywords, these visual styles, to think in this manner when you're using this tool uh, to not only describe the scene you want, the subjects you want, but then also in the style you want, because that's just really going to give you way more creativity in terms of the range of results you can create. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. And now we're going to move on to some of the other AI tools in Canva, but we will sometimes come back to this and how they can be used to, again, take your results here and do something else with them or to help brainstorm sort of language you might use in here. So we'll talk about AI art generation even more, but we're also now going to get into these other AI tools within Canva.